Common Rider Geats is a Japanese special effects show where regular folks from all walks of life participate in the Desire Grand Prix. A deadly game where players have to fight horrifying monsters, all to have their single wish granted. Of course, these regular folks aren't completely powerless, as they're given a bunch of crazy cool power armor with enough gadgets and gimmicks to fill up toy shelves. Its central theme challenges you with the question, how far are you willing to go for your desires? Now if that sounds like a great D&D premise to you, I've got just the home route to help make that happen. Hello and thank you for being here, and welcome to My Wife Is, the MC. I'm DMV and you're watching Husbando Homebrew, a show where we take pop culture to pen and paper. Today we'll be looking over at the highlights of a new 5e homebrew supplement heavily inspired by Common Rider Geats. It provides some key building blocks for you to slot in its premise into your campaign world, a slew of magic item options to facilitate the desired Grand Prix, and of course, several new character creation options for your players to sink their teeth into. To showcase some of these features, we'll have you make a 9th level paladin. So, is everybody comfy at the table? Make sure that the like button is in your desired driver, because now, here comes the highlight. You're transported to the combat zone where the monsters have already started attacking the civilians. You call their attention and they immediately turn their blades towards you. Okay, it's the start of your turn. Time to use your aspirant's drive to transform. The command word is... Hey, shit! Here, take this hammer and slot it in. You can use a bonus action to increase your AC and use that hammer instead. That hammer has a bit of heft to it, yet you wield it with little effort. Almost as if your selfish desires are powering this weapon. You quickly parry the creature's downward swipe with the haft of your hammer, and follow up with one cracking blow against its grey cocoon-like head. The creature immediately dissolves. You run towards the other monster and attempt to follow up with a 10. Unfortunately, the creature manages to block the head of that hammer, blunting its impact significantly. Or does it? You pull strength from this struggle as you channel your energy into the hammer, transforming the back of the hammerhead into a rocket that propels your blow straight into the monster's temple. Riding on this bludgeoning smash is a radiant force that amplifies the strength of your blow. Three more monsters dash to your position. Pulling on the trigger along the handle, you drag its heavy hammerhead along the ground and ignite the rocket once again, letting it lift your arms high before smashing it to the ground with a powerful thunder wave that destroys the enemy group. Your incredible display of power has rewarded you with a new magnum buckle. Unfortunately, you were caught unawares as this grotesque mutation of a pitcher plant runs in from behind and fires explosive spores at you. Luckily, you managed to brace against a good chunk of it, only taking 6 points of poison damage instead of 12. You're slightly winded, but not too worse for wear. As a bonus action, you insert the magnum buckle and revolve it, allowing you to gain some distance. Oh, 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 oh gods, are, are you okay? Holy sh- your head went through your ass, oh my goodness! <clears throat> Excuse me. You stow the hammer and grab the gun with one swift motion and open fire at this creature. Several shots land with the first attack dealing 9 piercing damage. You extend the gun's barrel for extra firepower and continue your barrage for a second attack. Thanks to your special ability, you empower this ranged attack with a third level smite for a total of 11 piercing damage and 5d8 radiant damage due to its undead nature for a total of 26 points. The creature retaliates, pushing you back and attacking you with incredible ferocity. Using a charge from the magnum buckle, you cast the shield spell and fire a protective barrier to guard you against its mindless assault. You are determined to finish this, as you drive your shoulder into its abdomen and use that opportunity to take a bonus action and expend 4 charges for your next shot. Firing at point blank range is difficult, and you miss with a 12, if you were any regular player at least. But thanks to your aura of struggle, you push that 12 into a 15 and turn that stumble into an opportunity. You take your hammer and wedge it underneath the creature's arms to prevent it from pushing you away as you shove the firearm right into the monster's chest. Your arm is already straining to contain all that energy, but you decide to pump it even further with a third level smite. The weapon threatens to explode in your hand, but before that could happen, you squeeze hard on the trigger. 10 piercing damage, 8 radiant damage from Aura of Struggle, 17 radiant damage from a 5d8 divine smite, and another 17 force damage from a 46 charged shot. 52 damage total for a tactical break as the creature disintegrates against a massive beam that burns through its torso. What you just saw was a small combat example of how the supplement helps you run a Geats inspired game. 
First is that it enables some core mechanics that's central to the Kamen Rider aesthetic. This is done through magic items to facilitate the series' signature power armor and gadget-based gimmicks. The homebrew also has several character options. First are its races that are based on the series' four main characters. The Paragon is the idealist and the optimist, with its features centered around its determination. Mutation is the anomaly whose entire body is slowly and painfully transforming into the very monsters they fight. Ideal is a wish given form, the one who yearns for a genuine affection and protects those who have it. Last is the prayer, another wish personified, whose origins are close to those who grant the desires of others and has the potential to ascend into God. While the series is mostly composed of humans, these races themselves are meant to be cosmetically interchangeable with any of the races native to your world. Another character option, of course, is the Paladin subclass. The combat encounter you just saw showcased the Oath of Desire, which is a Paladin Oath that you can take at 3rd level. Its main theme is, uh, well, desire, and its core theme is the struggle to fight for your wish. Now, I can tell you all about the magic items or the character options all day, but can you really run a Geats themed story with just raw mechanics? There are so many moving parts to a death game reality show like the DGP. And this is why the opening chapter of the homebrew focuses on setting up the campaign. Now this isn't a full-on gazetteer, and neither is this written to be a module. Instead, the homebrew provides a list of key elements that make up Common Rider Geats, from details of the setting, key NPCs, and the general format of the DGP. You can find the document in the Ko-Fi link below. It's free, and the shop is there in case you want to help support the channel. We highly appreciate any amount you send our way, and it will help us even more if you share this video with your older sister. Now if 5v isn't your thing, then uh, thanks for being here I guess? If you want to try out another TTRPG system dedicated to Kamen Rider's flavor of tokusatsu, there's Convictor Drive Armored by Grief by Lionwing Publishing that was funded on Kickstarter. I haven't seen it myself, but I'm sure some of you lovely folks in the comments would rather tell me to try other systems anyway. Bless your hearts. Now, if Kamen Rider Gates isn't an edgy enough superhero for you, then this video will take you down the troubled duality of My Hero Academia's Todoroki Shoto. Until then, my wife and I hope you have a great day ahead.